So now let's see whether we can use the wave theory and explain the concepts of reflection and refraction. Now it's going to be a little bit tedious to draw all this stuff, so I better do all everything nicely in a nice civilized manner. So I'm going to use all the equipments that I have. Let's start with reflections. So here is the interface. Over here is the interface. And imagine there are incoming waves. And let's say that the incoming waves are like the following. Incoming this way. I'm going to draw two of these rays. And these two will be extreme rays. So one is here and one is over here. And how are going to be the wave fronts? Well, we already know that if you have parallel rays of light, source must be at infinity, and therefore the wave fronts must be plane waves. So we should have plane wave fronts. So I'm going to draw a wave front, which is over here. It has to be perpendicular. And so for that, I need my set square. Yeah. So it has to be perpendicular, like so. And therefore, my wave front, I'm just directly going to draw a wave front over here. Let's see, I got this right. Yeah. So this is what my wave front is going to look like. So what is the angle of incidence? Well, this is going to be the angle of incidence. And if this angle of is this angle is i, then this angle has to be i because this is perpendicular to it. Okay. Now, what is going to be the new wave front once it hits over here? Well, I have to consider all the points on this current wave front as a Huygens source, including this point, which is on the surface that itself acts as a Huygens source, and then I have to draw a secondary wavelet. But what I'm going to do is to do it in a nice and you know, to make sure it's presentable, I'm going to choose only two Huygens sources. I'm going to choose a Huygens source, which is over here, and I'm going to choose a radius, which is exactly yay big. So that corresponds to some time delta t, I don't know, but that's the radius which I'm going to choose. All right, so my new source begins as following. It's going to have a source over here. Oops. A little bit bigger, yeah. So, this is the secondary wave which is given out by this particular source, and the surface, the point on the surface, also gives out a secondary wave. And that wave, wave travels is the following, and it has to travel exactly the same distance outwards, right? Because the same time, and so now my new wave front has to be a common tangent which connects this point and this point. So this new wave front, I better draw it a new color. I will use red for that. Red indicates the new wave front, and the wave front has to be in such a way it has to form a tangent. So here it is. I'll try my best. Do this as is possible. All right. That's my new wave front. And so the new direction of propagation. I have to now draw by making sure that my rays of light are perpendicular to the wave front. So I think I need my set square again. And I'm going to put it this way. It's going to come out like so. Yeah. So that's what it's going to look like. And I'm going to draw this over here as well. All right. And minor construction, I have to just, just add this. There we have it. And this angle also has to be 90 degrees. And now what we have is a reflected wave. And we constructed the reflected wave using Huygens' principle. And this, by definition, now becomes the angle of refraction. But if that is the angle of refraction, then this angle must be 90 minus r, and therefore, this angle must be R. Convince yourself of that. Pause for a second and convince yourself of that. Now, let me give some names to this. I'll call this as O. That's the angle of incidence of the first, first, first ray of light. 
I call this as P, it's where the second ray of light hits. I call this as M, and I'll call this as N. And what we have to do now is concentrate on the triangle OMP and triangle OMP. I swear, just a little bit longer and we will have our concepts and we'll have our proof done. So if you now look at these two triangles, I can say, well, they have the same side, OP, the same side. So I can just say OP equals OP. They have two angles to be 90 degrees, so I have two angles to be equal. And also MP must be equal to ON because I took the same radius, right? So MP and ON are equal. NP and M MO are equal. What more do you want? These are congruent triangles. And if the triangles are congruent, then all the angles must be equal. And this immediately proves that I should be equal to R. Ta-da! There you have it. It's a very, um, not so simple maybe as uh, Newton's theory. But hey, hey, that's, that's perfect. So that makes sense. So he's able to explain why I equals R by making use of his weird but yet good enough theory of secondary Huygen sources. And now comes the most important one. Let's see whether it can do refraction. So you have to bear with me for a while now as we do refraction. So the initial conditions are the same, initial things are the same. You start with the interface of the medium. Here it is. And we insert in some ray of light. So I draw all these two extreme rays. It has to be parallel to this one. I'm trying to get this as accurate as possible. Okay. And I have to draw the wave front, and that wave front is going to be perpendicular to this one. So it's going to be sort of like this. And we draw the wave front right at this point, because that's where things get interesting. Again, this is 90 degrees. And if I draw the angle of incidence, this now is the angle of incidence. Okay, what's going to happen next? Well, well, what's going to happen that now since it's going into another medium, forget about reflection, we covered that, but now let's consider about the refraction part of it. What happens when it enters this medium? Well, if these two are different media, then the velocity of a wave is going to be different in different media. Think of a string, right? If you make a pulse on a string, then how fast the pulse moves depends upon the properties of the string, right? If you want, you can think about the spring also, or a slinky, it doesn't matter, whatever you want to think about. Definitely, the velocity of the waves depend upon the medium. So we can say, maybe, the velocity in this medium is V1, and the velocity of this medium is V2 as well. So Huygen is also saying that refraction takes place due to changes in velocity. Just like Newton. Hmm, maybe both of them agree with each other. Maybe we can sum up somehow, maybe somehow both of them are true. I don't know, let's see. Okay, so what's going to happen next? I have to again consider each point on this wavefront as a secondary Huygen source. But I'm going to choose this one as a secondary Huygen source. And I'm going to draw a wavefront. Again, the radius which I'm going to choose, I'm going to cleverly choose the radius such that it hits over here. So that's my radius. Okay. All right. Since I am waiting for some time delta t, this distance has to be equal to this one, has to be equal to v1 delta t. Now, in that same time delta t, all the other points on this wavefront is going to give out secondary waves. But I am interested on this one. It gives out its secondary waves in the second medium. And let's say, let's just say that V2 is smaller than V1, smaller than V1. Then the radius of this one is going to be V2 times delta t. The time is the same, right? And V2 times delta t is going to be a little bit smaller. So I have to make sure that it's going to be a little bit smaller. Okay, I'll choose this one. So here is going to be my secondary wave. And somehow I should have a wave front 
that is parallel to even this one and this one it has to be a tangent it should be tangential to this one and so my new wave front sort of kind of uh maybe gonna look like this so from here it has to be parallel to this one uh sort of like this and now i can draw direction of the propagation the direction of the propagation it has to be perpendicular to this one so i'm going to use my set square again and it's going to look like this so there it is and so i can draw now this parallel to this one yeah so i haven't shown a dramatic refraction over here but you can kind of see it is refracted a little bit uh, because I think I think I I chose this radius to be very close to this radius, so it does not turn out to be all a dramatic diffraction. But you can still see that there is some refraction. You can see that these two are not parallel to each other. I'm sorry for that, but hey, it'll work. It'll work. Don't worry. Now, how much is going to be this length? This length over here. Well, you must have guessed it. It has to be equal to v2 times delta t. That has to be the new radius. All right, now our angle of refraction is going to be this one, r. But if this is the angle of refraction r and this is 90 degrees, this is 90 minus r, this must also be r. And now what I can do is, uh, I can call this as i, same thing as over here. And I can look at these triangles and I can ask myself, what is sine i? Sine i is going to be the opposite side, which is v1 delta t divided by this side. I don't know what that side is. Call it as O and call this as P. Let's call this OP. And if I look at sine r, this triangle, it's going to be the opposite side, v2 delta t divided by OP. And therefore, if I divide them, the last step, we get the v1 divided by v2. And and look what we have. We have Snell's law. He says, I have proved that sine i by sine r is a constant. And that constant has to be v1 over v2. And that's what Snell called it as n2 over n1. So there it is. So I have proof. So you have proof now using Huygens wave theory. Oh, but look at the difference between the... Huygens wave theory and Newton's particle theory. They both prove refraction in their own way, but do you see a big difference there? Newton says sine i over sine r must be v2 over v1. And Huygens says it has to be v1 over v2. What? Oh my god. Um, so what basically uh, S Newton is saying is that the velocity in the second medium must be greater than the velocity in the first one. Right? See? And since this is bending towards the normal, this must be a denser medium. So Newton predicts that light moves with a higher velocity in a denser medium. And Huygens predicts exactly the other way around. Huygen predicts that the velocity in the denser medium must be smaller. See, that's how I drew a smaller one over here. There it is. It has to be smaller. That is amazing. Bo <coughs> Excuse me. Both of them are able to prove Snell's law, but they're both contradicting each other. In reality, I'm not surprised because particle theory and wave theory are two contradicting theories. For example, particles have collisions. Particles have momentum. Waves do not have collisions. Waves don't collide with each other. They just shake hands and they pass each other. And so we have two contradicting theories and both of them, the remarkable thing is they're explaining refraction in their own ways and they are completely opposite to each other. So this can only mean one thing. It, only one of them has to be true. Because both can't be. That's just not possible. So which one is true? Who's right? Newton or Huygen?